yang kedua ini untuk minggu ini saya nggak bikin konten yang berbeda cuma kebetulan ada satu acara dari Muslim Student Association atau dari Islamic Center di Aten yang mengadakan diskusi terkait dunia Islam untuk yang minggu ini kegiatannya adalah dengan uh, Islamic Banking ataupun perbankan syariah di Indonesia pembicaranya uh, Mas Muhammad Nur salah satu mahasiswa Kubrait dari Indonesia yang juga uh, salah satu staff di Bank Muhammad Nur nah, kita lihat uh, seperti apa sebetulnya uh, uh, perbankan Islam di Indonesia bagaimana perkembangannya dan Bagaimana prospek untuk ke depan? Okay. Presentations and um, it's going to be about Islam through the lens of Islamic finance industry in Indonesia by Muhammad Nur Hidayat. So please give him an applause. Before we, uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, Before we start the first session, let me say Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Muhammad uh, Hidayat, but actually my nickname is Nur. That's my mother name. <laughs> right, so uh, today's presentation, uh, the title will be Islam through the lens of Islamic finance industry in, in Indonesia. This is not going to be uh, an overview of Islam as a whole in Indonesia, but it, it will be only a small uh, point of view about the dynamics of, of Islam in Indonesia, which is from uh, the view of uh, Islamic finance industry. All right, so I will give you uh, an overview about uh, Indonesia for you who haven't got any idea about uh, where is Indonesia. So if you see the map here, uh, Indonesia is located in between the Asian continent and uh, Australian continent. And it consists of uh, thousands of thousands of uh, islands. It's actually 18. 18,000 islands. In 16, we have 261 million people. And then according to 2010 government census, uh, we have 87.1% uh, Muslims. So it's about 200 uh, million people are Muslims. First, it's actually quite big. It's actually the 16th largest economy in the world. And in 2007, we uh, joined uh, the G20 Uh, group to be one of the 20th largest economies uh, in the world. But in terms of uh, the GDP per capita or, or the living standard, uh, we are very modest. We still have a uh, 3,500 uh, uh, US dollar per capita per year. So it is cate still categorized as a middle lower income country. And then we have a secular constitution. So after we got independence from uh, the Dutch colonial in 1945, We established uh, our own nation based on a secular constitution, which is called the 1945 Constitution. So we, we embrace the whole uh, difference and diversity across the nation archipelago, whether it is in terms of race, language, and, and religions. In fact, we have uh, like more than 20 different ethnic groups and more than 400 different uh, local languages. All right, so uh, Islamic finance. So I don't know about... Uh, Uh, if you have any idea about Islamic finance, but this is just a quick introduction about Islamic finance as a whole. So, uh, in theory, Islamic finance is any financial transaction which is based on Islamic uh, law or Islamic uh, jurisdiction. And then in, 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 in the industry level, uh, it covers Islamic banks and then Islamic insurance and then Islamic uh, bonds or we call it sukuk or Islamic microfinance and then Islamic uh, investment fund and so on. Chart of the global Islamic finance market in 2015, so it accounts for 2.1 trillion dollars, and it's only merely one uh, percent of the of the total uh, financial market for, for the total uh, conventional financial market in the world. And then, uh, how did Islamic finance uh, <coughs> begin? It actually began in the 1960s and 1970s in the Middle East, uh, especially in uh, Saudi Arabia and in Egypt. Uh, and the purpose of which, at that time, uh, the spirit of, of the establishment of Islamic finance 
was to create a social and economic justice to to Muslim uh, countries, which used to be colonized by by by, by the Western colonials. And actually, Muslim countries here, uh, to put it on, on, on the context, uh, Muslim countries uh, host 70% of uh, world energy resources, but host 40% of the total poor, poor people in the world by now. So that was the, the, the initial spirit. And then the principles of uh, Islamic finance, uh, the first one is uh, the prohibition of, of interest. Uh, what is meant by interest here is uh, any, any profits which are not earned through a degree of risk. So for example, uh, I lend you, I lend uh, Amira a thousand dollar, and then for one month, uh, he has to pay me back like a thousand and five hundred. So the five hundred dollars would be, would be an interest. I do not take any risk for that because I just, I transfer the risk to, 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 to Muhammad Amira, for example. And then uh, the second principle is, uh, Every financial transaction in Islamic finance must uh, contribute to real economy or must uh, contribute to to real sector of economy. That's why every transaction must have an uh, underlying asset for them. So that's why we uh, uh, it, it prohibits gamble because in gambling, you do, you do, not, you do not have, have asset, asset to, 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 to be transaction, right? So we just double your money, so no, no, no asset at all. And then conventional stock market, uh, we also do not do that, and then money market, uh, currency exchange market. So uh, all of those are, are are prohibited according to to some finance. And then uh, by avoiding the the interest, uh, some finance devices uh, its own mechanisms to do the transaction, which is called uh, profit and loss sharing mechanisms, and it is uh, divided into several uh, financial contracts, uh, which can be. Profit sharing with, uh, can be profit and loss sharing, it can, can be a, a sales contract, uh, uh, financial transaction and so on. And then the last one, uh, some finance is, is an in inclusive uh, system. So it, it is not exclusively to toward the Muslim uh, people, but for everybody. Right, so this is the general uh, difference between the conventional finance and some finance. The first one is uh, the application of interest, and then some finance doesn't have any uh, interest-based uh, transaction. But they have a uh, profit and loss sharing, and then debt-like financing, and so on. There are actually so many types of, of contracts. And then conventional finance, uh, they have risk transfer principle, like uh, previously I, I, I explained to you. So I transfer the risk to, 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 the, to the businessman. So if I am an, an investor, so I just transfer all of the risk to the businessman. I, you guarantee my profit, but in uh, Islamic finance, uh, uh, there is risk and sharing uh, uh, principle. So profit and and loss are agreed. Uh, uh, it shares uh, before the, the signing of the contract. And then in conventional finance, uh, money is a commodity, and then in Islamic finance, money is not a commodity but only a medium of, of transaction. So that's why a foreign exchange. Uh, uh, market is not uh, allowed for the this. And then conventional final real and non-real sector, sector transaction because uh, uh, the transaction in, in conventional finance may or may not reflect the, the real value of, of the Ternyata ada kesalahan teknis karena ternyata tidak semua presentasi yang disampaikan oleh Mas Nur itu terekam dalam kamera saya. Uh, jadi ada beberapa masih banyak bagian mungkin ini hanya baru sepertiganya banyak uh, bagian yang tidak terekam dan pasti itu tidak lengkap. Namun memang bagian-bagian uh, yang tidak terekam itu adalah fokus terkait dengan perkembangan Islamic banking di Indonesia. Nah untuk uh, memenuhi atau mengisi kekosongan itu saya akan uh, membuat video khusus tanya jawab dengan Mas Nur terkait dengan perkembangan. Islamic Banking di Indonesia Oke okay. Tunggu ya videonya Terima kasih sudah menyaksikan vlog saya Dan jangan lupa untuk klik subscribe Dan atau like video ini Dan juga kirim komentar di halaman bawah video ini. Terima kasih dan sampai ketemu lagi di vlog selanjutnya Salam